Well, good well, uh, welcome, good afternoon. Uh, as we call together the uh, Airport Special Management Committee meeting to order, and we will start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you don't mind. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, is there, are there any staff recognition? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, madam. I guess good afternoon, madam chair. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize Mr. Brandon Seeley, if you'd be so kind as to stand up, Mr. Seeley. Uh, Mr. Seeley is the manager of maintenance contracts and who was recently nominated to serve. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just serve a second two year term as the Florida Airport Council's facility committee chair at the annual conference that was held in Miami this past summer. Uh, the facilities committee consists of airport and corporate member professionals focused on airport facilities and maintenance, and they work together to identify issues and improve methods to address uh, Florida's commercial service and general aviation airports. So thank you, Brandon, for your continued service to the state of Florida. Thank you. And my other uh, recognition is Mr. Furio, there's James, Mr. Furiosi. He's our director of facilities and maintenance. And he was selected to advance from secretary and treasurer um, on the executive board of the Florida Airports Council to vice chair of the Florida Airports Council. Uh, the vice chair also serves as the chair of the Florida Airport Council State Affairs Committee. Uh, so he'll be spending some time up north uh, on our behalf as well. So um, this, that committee uh, monitors the legislative actions and proposals um, that may impact airports and the aviation industry in the state and helps recommend state legislative priorities to the board and participates in legislative hearings both here and in D.C. So we thank James as well for his continued support. Steve, I must say, it's great to have that representation there so we stay right on top of what's going yes. on. But I'm a believer when you expose talent like that to the rest of the state, you got to keep an eye on it. Somebody might be looking He's for He's right it. there. Yes, all right. <laughs> so you know where home is, right? Okay, very good. All right, any others? No, ma'am, thank you. Right, thank you very much. Is there any public comment on the consent agenda for today? Hearing none. I move we uh, approve it. Okay, motion to approve Second. it. Second. Second. Any further, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, then uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, stand approved. Okay, now we'll move right to the administrative agenda. Oh, thank, thank you, Madam you. Chair. Um, I'd ask Ms. Underhill to introduce the item uh, which requests board rank qualifications uh, for the consolidated maintenance facility. Good afternoon, everyone. Some background on uh, the agenda item number two. On May 21st, 2024, a request for letters of qualifications was advertised for design manager services for a new consolidated maintenance facility here at RSW. On June 27, 2024, LOQs were submitted from three firms, Infrastructure Consulting and Engineering, Schenkel Schultz Architecture, and Weston and Sampson. A publicly noticed staff evaluation committee meeting was held on July 24th and scored the LOQs in the following order. Number one, Infrastructure Consulting and Engineering. Number two, number two, excuse me, Schenkel Schultz Architecture. And number three, Weston and Sampson. At the August Airport Special Management Committee meeting, the ASMC accepted staff's recommendation to hear oral presentations by all three firms at a future Airport Special Management Committee meeting prior to their ranking. The order of presentations was randomly drawn as uh, number one, Infrastructure Consulting and Engineering, number two, Weston and Sampson, and number three, Schenkel Schultz Architecture. All three firms are here today, and therefore I would ask Robert from purchasing to come forward and assist with these presentations. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, board members, staff. Uh, at today's presentation, representing Infrastructure Consulting Engineering will be Doug 
please pronounce your last name, Hambrex, and Bob Anderson. Uh, for the record, 10 minutes of presentation time, unlimited Q&A, and your time will start when the red light goes off. Good afternoon. I'm Doug Hambrecht. Um, I'm with Infrastructure Consulting and Engineering. Uh, very proud and excited to speak to the uh, members of the Airport Special Management Committee. I have uh, 28 years of experience in aviation. Uh, I'm a civil engineer, licensed in Florida, based out of Tampa. I do nothing but airports. Um, I have experience with RSW and the Port Authority through our current general consulting contract, which we're uh, still underway on. Um, lots of site development experience, uh, maintenance uh, facilities similar to this. This one shown right here is in Pensacola. Uh, I've also done them in uh, Fort Walton Beach, uh, cargo, rental cars, uh, fuel farm, um, various projects. Uh, most recently one for Lockley, the Collier County uh, mosquito control development project, which has not been built yet, but it's currently under design. It's a little bit about uh, our firm, our current offices throughout the southeast, and uh, we just opened an office in Fort Myers in September 1st, 2001. We understand, uh, as project manager, we understand that DBE is very important to the board. Uh, we pay uh, strict attention to that. This is some of our Recent experience with DBE participation, uh, the highlighted ones are what we've done here for Fort Myers. Um, I would also add that we have uh, staff that has worked uh, as airport managers, understand the BT, B2G Now program, and we also have a former uh, FAA regional manager on board uh, who's good with uh, DBE compliance and also obtaining grants. Other than our experience, we feel like our best qualification is the in-house capabilities that we bring to this program. Uh, we have uh, planning, aviation planning in-house for concepts and early development. We have environmental uh, to take care of what could be a, a pretty complicated environmental project. Uh, we have, of course, civil engineering. Uh, Maram works for me. Um, Bob Anderson, who's here to speak on behalf of architecture and construction. We'll also utilize some uh, local uh, sub-consultants for DVE participation, but the important thing about having these capabilities in-house is that we can control them, we can do quality control reviews, we can set the schedule, and we're better responsive to, uh, to the authority. In working with the uh, authority on the... Um, uh, bond resolution, we've uh, interviewed some of the uh, maintenance and facility staff, and we've determined what they, what they want, um, how they operate. <clears throat> Number one is customer satisfaction, a clean and functioning terminal, and I've been to enough of these meetings to know that that's important to this board as well. The second would be safety um, but for the public, but also for the airlines and the air side, and also for the staff. Um, how they accomplish this? Well, there's some processes. TPC online skilled uh, maintenance training, collaborative uh, training center, and focus on the individual with staff retention, which is also very important. And this leads to some outcomes. Um, zero discrepancies on your last Part 139 inspection. Congratulations. That never happens with an airport this large. Um, and the door-to-door -door customer experience, which has been... Um, pretty remarkable. So how do we get there with this facility? Well, we think this is going to um, enable a, a consolidation of resources, the different sections uh, in the maintenance and facilities program, uh, more space for growth with the terminal expansion phase one and two and the CONRAC, you're going to need more employees. This will add efficiencies under one roof or in close proximity a cohesive unit for management and culture, and better inventory control through your enterprise asset management system. 
Now I'm going to introduce Bob Anderson. He's going to talk about um, how, how we get there and some of our other experience. Bob is um, 45 years of experience. Um, he's uh, an architect through the American Institute of Architects, and I've known him personally for 25 years. We've worked together. So, Bob. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. Um, it's worthy of note that uh, about 32 years of that experience is related to aviation facilities. You see some variety here. Uh, a lot of those have pieces and components of the same types of things that we're dealing here from construction types, uh, fueling, uh, even things like the open offices uh, and other uh, storage and service areas. We think that will be of direct benefit to you uh, with this project. I'm also ably assisted by Karina Lanier. She's also a registered architect in our Tampa office. Uh, has done mostly uh, aviation work over that time and also uh, some work uh, for us, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, when we begin to look at the project through the RFP, this is your selected or preferred uh, concept. We just put it into a bigger context uh, on the airport. So the golden box is, is kind of the concept area. Uh, two existing facilities in white on the right and the left with the gray facility in the middle uh, being the new building uh, and then the green surrounding it is actually uh, relocated uh, drainage ponds. Uh, within that report it notes some concerns about this site development. We all, we'll make that simple and call it woodlands, wetlands, and wildlife. Oh my. Um, so uh, all of these uh, can potentially affect your schedule and therefore your cost. Uh, part of that process is, uh, as you see here, it talks about you know, showing that these uh, impacts are not avoidable. And so we, of course, want to look at that as we move the project forward. Uh, some of the thoughts or ideas we have is that uh, perhaps it's possible to take some areas that are already cleared uh, and develop those for the water retention. Uh, thus reducing uh, impacts on the site itself. Uh, there's potential of maybe shifting a little more of the pavement uh, even further forward uh, and finding different locations uh, for the ponds. Uh, and there's even the idea that maybe some facilities that are here now become redundant as we build new meeting facilities and warehouses and things like that. So before we get stuck in a box, we like to make sure that we understand all the parameters of the box that we're in. Uh, aside from that, there are some things that your staff recognized, uh, areas that are dispersed around the airport right now in the terminal, in the old R station, uh, and other locations that uh, need more definition of how they come into this area. Uh, there's some things that may be added uh, from the standpoint of the chemicals and fueling and, and wash. Uh, but one of the things that stood out to us is this idea of um, taking some area and replacing it with more flexible covered space. So we're actually working with another client here in Florida on the panhandle uh, to cover this five acre uh, site. So some of the technologies that we've been looking at, again, we think could be of direct benefit and use to you as this project goes forward. Uh, Doug mentioned our work together on several maintenance uh, facilities. Uh, I've actually done uh, 10 of those with another five through some level of planning and so forth. Uh, some examples that are very similar to what you have. This is a, a combination of the offices, the open offices, uh, a flexible meeting space, uh, and then also a technical work area, in this case, material testing uh, lab. This was actually an old warehouse that we repurposed. Uh, it's about half the size of the project that you have today. Uh, another example here. Uh, this is uh, almost twice the size, has a lot more of the shop areas, meaning metal fabrication, painting, sanding, uh, some of those types of operations. But I think it's really important as you do this to try to find a happy marriage of the people, places, and the toolbox areas uh, as you go forward. And, and I think we've been successful in doing that. Uh, another example, this is, again is about twice the size of your facility. You can see it's much larger than its uh, surroundings. So we did a lot of work, this was Orlando Executive, uh, with kind of the campus appearance, looking at materials and textures and, and forms, trying to break that building down a little bit more to help it fit in. Um, and we feel like there's an opportunity here to do that. You have two facilities that don't really relate to each other, but we would hope through maybe shapes, colors, forms, materials that we can find a way to 
blend this together to give it more of a cohesive campus appearance. And uh, just to, to summarize some of the other things, we had a very detailed uh, project approach. Uh, your staff seemed to, to like that. So uh, in the spirit of the late night, we gave you the top 10 of some of those things to be uh, concerned about. And again, it starts with that idea. Let's make sure that we have all the pieces in this project that we need to. Uh, this is a mission critical facility. Let's, so let's think about how this needs to work because if there is a storm or hurricane, this is very critical to your recovery for that. And, and on through the, the project with that, always keeping in mind the, the last one, the delivery of a project that meets the needs of the stakeholders. <laughs> All right, well, we're at the end, so questions. Okay, uh, questions? I don't, I don't have any. Uh, I do have one question, if you don't mind. Uh, may I call you Doug? Yes, okay, of course. So Doug, as the project manager, I know you're in Tampa right now, so do you have the dedicated time to be here and make commitment to this project? I will, you can't be in two places at one time. Yes, ma'am, 100%. Uh, we've uh, been working here for, I guess, about 18 months so far, and it's it's been absolutely wonderful. We love working with the staff here, and this is a very important project uh, to you and, and to us. So, yeah, I, w I would pledge myself 100% available. Wonderful. Where did you, oh, you, I heard you opened a Fort Myers office September 1? Where yes, uh, there's no aviation people in it right now. It's just uh, CEI folks uh, as part of the district is that, um, well, the DOT. But, you know, as we grow, um, we would love to start putting uh, more folks down there and, and staffing it up. But I won't uh, be dishonest and say there's aviation people in there right now because there's not. But uh, we're growing, and it's very exciting. If, if you need to be here, you could. Take Daniels Parkway all the way to the end. And I think it changes to, uh, I forget what it changes to when you get. Cypress Lake. Yes. And then you make a left on Gregor, is that it? And it's, and oh, it's, well, and it's right there. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So at least they'll have a place for you to roll out on pallets if you need to stay overnight. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's very low. <laughs> okay. What do you see as the biggest challenge uh, for this project? Uh, I think, uh, you know, we'll get through the environmental. Environmental will be challenging, but um, with the, the right resources and dedication, you'll get through it. I'll turn over the uh, architectural component to Bob. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think we had some of that in our top ten, but a lot of times these are fairly simple enclosures with very complex pieces going on inside. And so working with those different stakeholders, uh, it'd be very unusual to not, you know, have the guy that runs the carpentry shop to have a really strong idea about, you know, the flow of materials, how he wants the uh, area to operate, and so on and so forth through that. So it's just, you know, maintaining that level of attention from a big picture, like the environmental issues, to the small issues, like, you know, how does this shop work? How do we make sure that we facilitate, you know, some of the quality of life experiences, the, the ground bag lunches? different types of things that, that make it work. And then, like I said, you don't lose sight of the fact that this really is mission critical. So, you know, how hardened does it need to be? What kind of resiliency does the facility need to have to make sure it continues to function when we need to use it? What kind of time frame are you looking at to, for start to finish of, on this project? It seems to me that uh, the environmental issues are pretty uh, going to be time consuming. Yeah, I think that is the that's the elephant in the room. Yeah, because that's I mean we that's we a lot of wetlands, and you you got to go through two different agencies. And yeah, yes, the, the, the wildlife because of the size of the impacts, you're right there at the threshold. And then when you get into that, we have another project uh, in Valkyria, you know, much larger and then again sort of more complex with different anger. Again, that's gotten into wildlife review, and you can pretty much, you just can't predict the schedule anymore when you get too far into that process. What do you, what do you see now for the just approximate time for this project? Well, I would say, um, I think we would start with the conceptual planning phase, 
get an idea of what the facilities and maintenance department wants, and then uh, get an idea of the footprint, and then move forward with the uh, with the permitting. Hopefully, it's not an EA. If it is an EA, uh, minimum eighteen months. Um, but you know, start with some conceptual planning. Several months of that interviews with the staff, the environmental process, and then design and uh, and permitting. Um, start to finish two and a half years. Well, with the uh, with the lack of the permit for the wetlands issue, it seems like uh, that's really going to curtail the amount of activity you can do on site until you get those permits. That's correct. So you, you foresee that there'll be other things you can work on, like design and mm -hmm. so forth, to keep the project moving along. Yeah, yeah. We just have to hope that there's not an EA involved. That can really slow things down. Um, we move forward. Uh, the example he just gave on the East Coast. We move forward, uh, final design, and um, we discovered during the uh, biological assessment period that they found a couple of scrub jays. And now we've been in that holding pattern uh, going through the FAA for scrub jays, so a full-blown EA. So you just, unfortunately, you just, you, you just don't know. But we're going to dedicate the, the resources, the engineers, the architects, the manpower to do what we can. Um, but there are the agencies. Yep, thank you. Yes, sir. Scott, may I have No, I'm good. Thank you. Good? I'm good. Okay, I think you have, what, a couple of minutes to say Oh, we're hi. closing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> well, thank you for those questions. I really appreciate it. Appreciate being here. Appreciate the, the, uh, uh, the input. Um, I just want to say that uh, nothing really speaks to our reputation quite like uh, some of the words from our, um, our current clients. Um, fact is that uh, we love what we do. We love our clients, and we take every project extremely seriously. So why select infrastructure consulting and engineering? Um, I'll be the PM, dedicated 100%. I have strong technical skills. Um, under me will be a key team of in-house professionals through all the major disciplines that we can control. Uh, we have a clear understanding of your development and the four Fs, functional, feasible, flexible, and affordable. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Our second presenter today will be Weston and Sampson Engineers, Inc. Uh, speaking for this group will be Joseph Songel, Rafael Yamines, and Sarah Edwards. And Mr. Dana's already got them switched over. Dana, which one is there? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're excited to be here and present. Um, I'm excited to be here and present on behalf of Western and Samsung. Um, there's a lot of information to go through, so um, we'll just get to it. Uh, the uh, presentation contains our team, team qualifications, project approach, and um, QA, QC closing. I'm uh, sorry. Um, I'm Rafael Jimenez, um, Vélez as well, uh, legal name, um, major, I'm a sort of civil engineer with a major in structural engineering, minor in project management, <clears throat> three years construction experience, 10 years of, uh, 
construction inspections and 22 years of design experience uh, where I've uh, managed the uh, designs of uh, five-story parking garages, um, 40 million veterans administration, outpatient clinics, um, worked, um, did the structural project management for the Albany Terminal A rehab and the uh, Fort Lauderdale Intermodal Center um, project definition document, among others. Um, <clears throat> the Joe Sango, to my right, he's been with Weston and Samson for 14 years. He is the regional director for the Fort Myers office, and <clears throat> he has a multiple design experience on DPWs and fleet maintenance facilities. Um, Sarah behind me, she is our lead architect at the West, uh, Fort Myers office, and she also has uh, uh, mul uh, multiple experience, design experience for fleet maintenance facilities. She currently leads the Cape Coral Fleet Maintenance Facility and Design. Um, <clears throat> the chart also includes our key personnel um, and subconsultants that we've kind of selected for this project. <clears throat> um, we have, uh, our key personnel has uh, an average of 22 years working for the Western and Samsung, and we have X. DEP employees are our staff to help out with permitting issues. Um, <clears throat> now I will hand it over to you to go over specifics. Great, thank you, Rafael. Um, one thing that uh, Rafael didn't man mention, um, one of the reasons that we have him as, as project manager is uh, not only his expertise when it comes to the engineering, but his understanding of aviation. He's actually a licensed flight instructor and a pilot himself. Um, very familiar with these types of facilities. Um, as for our qualifications, we were really excited when this procurement came out, um, not necessarily because of the airport aspect, but because of the fleet maintenance facility aspect. So we have a dedicated group that specializes in fleet maintenance and DPW facilities. So it's one of our six different um, groups within the firm. Um, we've completed more than 150 of these types of projects from programming, design, through construction. We have 40 dedicated staff um, with that average tenure of 22 years of experience working on these various types of facilities. Um, we've managed them from conception all the way through final design, final construction, building commissioning, and turning over the keys to the, uh, to the owners, which is the most exciting part. Um, one of the things that, that we feel differentiates us from other firms is that we have in-house industrial engineers, and they specialize in the equipment that go inside these buildings. And this is a really key component to programming and designing a building to make sure that you've got the right equipment with changes in vehicles going from gas powered to, to uh, electric powered. Um, it requires different types of lifts, different types of equipment that you need in there. We understand those types of concerns. Um, we'll specify the bridge cranes, the monorails, the, the vehicle maintenance, the lift equipment, the wash bays. There's many different types. You have moisture concerns, how that interacts with the building, um, fueling facilities, fluid distribution systems. So you've got your your um, cooling fluids, your oils, all different types of mechanical um, fluid systems, tailpipe exhaust systems. We understand those inside and out as we design these types of facilities. I want to speak to some of our qualifications locally. So we're the local design team out of our Fort Myers office. Um, we've got a few projects that we're, we're currently underway right now. Cape Coral is a large project. It's a 40 garage bay fleet maintenance facility that we're building from scratch on a campus. It's also gonna include a property management building and a storage warehouse. It's, about a, it's gonna be about a $70 million project. Um, 40 Garage Bay, it's also gonna be designed with resiliency in mind. They're gonna use it as a storm shelter during hurricanes. Um, we're really excited about that project. City of Northport, we're programming uh, their DPW facility, which will then turn into design. It has fleet maintenance component. It has um, administrative offices, uh, solid waste, a whole bunch of different departments. And then we're also doing a fuel island for the city of Naples. So that's all being done locally with the support of our facilities team, uh, which is located throughout the country, primarily in the Northeast. With that, I'll hand it over to Sarah for Project Approach. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll be talking about the Project Approach. Um, Westman Sampson understands that um, this project scope is based on the pre-programmed 45,000 square foot 
warehouse and accompanying office space. Within this space, um, we have a carpentry and welding sign shop, as well as um, various administrative features. Um, we've taken into consideration the operational and safety features for the new facility, such as site access and security of the aircraft operations, um, emergency access to the site, um, air side, and um, life cycle cost analysis to provide insights for things such as sustainability and resiliency to severe weather events. Um, in regard to the site layout and design, we plan to conduct a thorough analysis of the program site, including um, equipment parking, covered storage, um, fuel tank and pump, as well as um, parking and vehicle circulation. Um, for utility and drainage improvements, we will look at um, stormwater mitigation as it uh, re relates to the wetland areas and explore um, infiltration in chambers below grade, if possible. Um, we also confirm your functional space planning that was previously developed and look at operational workflows and space utilizations to make sure that they um, pertain to the user groups that are using them. Um, we'll also look at things such as ventilation, lighting, safety features within these shops um, to make sure that those um, spaces function as intended. We hope to tie this into the master plan of the airport um, for the best future uses of the airfield shop, the um, conversion of the field shop and warehouses into covered storage, as well as the new heavy equipment wash area, and then also the potential expansion of fuel facility to ethanol free tanks. Um, for permitting, we'll ensure all the proposed design complies with airport operations and plan development, refer to the FAA regulations and guidelines, um, provide appropriate order product approvals, um, wind loads and um, confirm that everything is in accordance with the Florida Building Code. I'll turn it back over to Raphael. Yes, uh, so we understand the uh, oops, wrong slide. QAQC is important. <coughs> Our expertise and maintenance facility give us a better understanding of space and infrastructure requirements of the complex MEP systems. <clears throat> that a maintenance, maintenance facility houses, uh, hydraulics, compressed air, ventilation, uh, fuel piping and metering uh, systems, among others. Uh, we also leverage BIM uh, during design process to identify potential conflicts, internal and internal QAQC is conducted before any comments release for submissions. Um, <clears throat> good QAQC program will eventually reduce the amount of change orders during constructions. Um, and talking about cost, our DPW and maintenance facility design experience allows us to track bid costs, which as we see, they've been increasing for the recent past and we don't see any reductions in the future. Um, <clears throat> potential strategies to mitigate construction costs are including all bid alternates, um, cost comparisons between construction materials, concrete, CMU, precast, steel, um, and including uh, escalation clauses or increased construction durations in, in the contract documents. And I'll hand it over to you for closing. Thank you. Um, so in closing, we've got staff that's passionate and dedicated about maintenance facilities. This is, this is the work we do. What we lack in airport experience, we, we make up in, in programming and designing facilities such as this one. Um, we're an emerging office here. We have over 20 staff and they're continuing to grow over the past years. Um, we have DBs on our team, especially um, covering the CE&I component, so we'll be well in compliance with your goals. Um, we're unique. Okay. So, anyone have a question? Okay. Yes. Uh, I didn't hear you talk very much about uh, your environmental team. Do you have an environmental team to deal with the wetlands issues that are associated with this site? We do. We do that. We do that in house. Um, we have a former DEP staff member on in house that helps us with um, a lot of permitting aspects. Uh, we have strong relations with Southwest Florida Water Management District as well. Um, we've actually looked through the, um, we actually have some slides in here 
that cover the environmental permitting aspect. Um, so we're familiar with it. We, we believe in getting out in front of that early as much as we can. So we want to have pre-application meetings with the regulatory agencies to discuss our project and approach. Um, we'd want to do that while we're doing the building program or confirming the building program. Um, Raphael, did you have additional things to add? No, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I thought you were um, adding on to that. So yeah, so the environmental permitting is is a concern of ours. However, we do have a roadmap and we've got a proven track record um, working here in Southwest Florida region on site development projects to to mitigate those things. Um, and we do handle the wetlands and stuff in house. I noticed uh, one of your diagrams you put up uh, showed an interesting parking lot. Is that uh, are you saying that's the parking lot that you're right here that you're planning for this? facility and uh, and uh, I noticed uh, in the parking lot itself uh, you look like you're incorporating uh, drainage features within the parking lot. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. One of the aspects that we'd look to consider is putting in infiltration chambers to, to mitigate the stormwater within the site, um, keep it compact so that way we know that there's other future master planning efforts. We don't want to um, take up another unnecessary area. Now in terms of the parking lot configuration, this was a rendering that we put together um, to, to show one concept that could be done for the site. This would obviously be vetted further with your team to go through the programming aspect, look at traffic circulation, site safety, um, you know, where you want to store vehicles before they're maintained, where they're going to go afterwards. So um, there's certainly a lot of work that, that is to be done to this, but we wanted to show a concept that could be employed and some of the things that we consider as part of the evaluation. Is the uh, material that you're going to use for the parking lot, is that going to be impervious? It could be impervious. Um, sometimes you have issues with maintenance when it comes to that. Um, so you could either go through and have an impervious area that feeds an infil infiltration. More common approach would be to, to use a standard asphalt and then run it through a system of catch basins to get it underneath into the uh, infiltration system and then discharging out to the, to the pond area. How, how will you deal with the... Uh stormwater runoff from that uh, parking lot? In terms of storage or, yeah. or discharge. So we were looking at seeing if we can modify some of the existing stormwater ponds to potentially expand on it, see if there's unused capacity or gain capacity. Um, putting it underground for detention is also another, um, is also another option for, for some site storage. So there's a handful of options that we'd be looking at on the site. Are you looking at uh, building a, a filter marsh? to filter the water before it goes into the retention ponds? Yeah, we, we definitely have a pretreatment system, whether it's a filter marsh, whether it needs to be mechanical, like a hydrodynamic separator, something uh, in an oil water separator. We want to make sure that we're not getting any discharges from any fuels or, or even knockdown from vehicle washing and everything like that. So we'd have to be in, in conformance with DEP guidelines, but there's, there's, def, there's a number of different practices that can be employed. It really just depends on what the final site configuration is and what the constraints are that we have, but there are a number of tools at our disposal. What do you see as the biggest uh, challenge for this project? I would say, um, you know, obviously the environmental, the permitting is a challenge. I think that's something that we can navigate because we've done that before. We've got a lot of experience in that area. Um, one of the things that we want to consider is programming. We want to make sure that you have the right program because having the right program is essential. This is a building you're going to live with for the next 20 to 50 years and you want to make sure that it's right you want to make sure your operators know it's right that it has the right equipment the right configuration is expandable and, and meets your needs so really a lot of the work is done up front and then the rest is just putting your vision onto paper okay thank you I, I, i've got one I, i'd like to ask staff all this talk about the environment don't we already have the site selected and we know we can build it or or what are, what are we doing here Yeah. Later. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Oh. I, I'm just curious as to what you think is the most important for us to select. Someone with local experience, airport experience, or maintenance building experience? And which one do you feel you excel in? Sure. I, I would say we excel in two out of those three. We're local. We're located off Summerlin. We're going to be relocating to a bigger office as we expand off of Metro Parkway. So we're right down the street. And fleet maintenance. When this, like I said, when this project first came out, the first challenge I said is 
to show that we meet the qualifications on paper might be a little more difficult because it was very airport heavy. However, this is outside of the, of the primary secured area of the airport, and this is really a fleet maintenance proper project. And you want to make sure you have the right equipment and the right building to service your vehicles with the right program. Um, I, I feel it's, it's not as crucial of an, obviously having airport experience, understanding the security, understanding the needs and the program is important, and that's why we, we have um, Raphael in, in such a prominent role, because he understands those aspects. But you really want to get the building right, because at the end of the day, it's still maintaining vehicles, despite what their use is outside of that building. And, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, I noticed, um, I'll call you Mr. Raphael, <laughs> has only been with your firm for about one year, but he's got like 22 years of experience. And how much of that experience is related to airport? Work? Sure, I'll, I'll let him speak for, for himself. Um, but he, he just recently joined us. He's somebody that we've been trying to uh, persuade to come over to Weston and Samson for a while. Um, we've gotten to the point now where, we're, where we were able to make the strategic hire such as Raphael. Um, and we have a proven track record. Uh, we're an employee-owned firm. A lot of our employees are lifers, so once you join, we're, we're very focused on that. We're an ESOP, which kind of um, focuses, allows us to focus on repeat service and client satisfaction, and that's one of the reasons why we're able to, to attract him. So he has a shorter tenure, but he's going to be working with a lot of people that have been with us for a long time. As it speaks to airport experience, I'll let Raphael speak for himself. Uh, yes. Um, so my airport experience... Uh, was with a previous company. It's uh, I I did uh, threshold inspections at uh, Key West, that new terminal that's going up. Um, I did the work on the like I said uh, during the presentation, uh, uh, Albany Airport, uh, the terminal rehabilitation in New York. Um, I was in I I was working with. Uh, the Fort Lauderdale Intermodal Center, which is a big parking building, but it's it's owned by the Broward County Aviation Department. Um, it's over US one and uh, in the roundabout or the uh, I forget it's so it actually is over a detention pond, a FDOT detention pond. Um, I was uh, the structural manager for the design concepts that will eventually make it into the content for the project definition document. Um, I also prepare some project definition documents for uh, air traffic control tower at North Perry, um, the structural content um, with, and I supervised uh, a number of uh, junior engineers uh, in my previous company. Um, I did do some inspections here at the RSW air traffic control tower at threshold. Uh, I worked for with the threshold inspector, so whenever he needed someone to come in, he would call me and I would do the threshold inspections at the tower. And I was scheduled to do the inspections at the Terminal A expansions, but uh, I, that's when I transitioned to uh, everything companies. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a number of projects that have involved the airports and Plus, I'm also an, a pilot, so I've always been around airports. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think you have a, is it a minute to do a wrap-up as to why we should select you. Sure. Let's see. Yeah. So, don't know how to expand the screen, so um, <laughs> bear with me on the on the reduced side. So, um, as I was saying, it's uh, you know we have passionate staff that are that are dedicated to these types of projects. Um, the reliability for the for the budget and planning and estimating is really a key component. So we, as Raphael was explaining, we track these numbers very closely throughout the country um, to see where the costs are going to decide whether a, a metal building, a block building, you know, the different types of constructions, different ways to mitigate costs. But we have costs down to the square foot that includes equipment and everything. And, and we can, you know, advise as we progress through this project as to if we need to make modifications to stick within budget. Um, local resources, so um, we started, um, when, I, when I came down here, uh, we were around six people, now we're over 20, and we've got a few more um, that are coming on board, so we've got a, a large market presence here, we've got a lot of established clients locally here, and uh, we're looking to build on that, we understand the area, um, you know, we live here, we work here, and... Um, 
And I already covered the last bullet, so you guys got that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good afternoon again. Uh, for the third presentation today will be Schinkel and Schultz, Inc. Uh, speaking on behalf of this firm will be Natalie White and Gary Kruger. Good morning. Thank you for having us here today. My name is Natalie White. I am an associate principal at Schinkel Schultz as well as um, the regional leader for the Southwest Florida office. Um, and I will be the point of contact and um, project manager on this project. Along here with me is Gary Kruger, who's a partner in our firm. And I just want to talk a little bit about our team. Uh, who is Schinkel Schultz? We're an architecture and interior design firm. We have been in Lee County for 32 years. Um, aviation is one of our primary markets. And uh, we've done over 50 international and regional airports. Um, as you can see here, we have 24 years of history with LCPA. Our vision of the firm is to inspire our community through impactful design. And some of that impact has happened here in Southwest Florida. You can see you're probably familiar with some of these projects here. Um, one of them being the, um, our control tower here. Our experience ranges from Collier County to Charlotte County. So a little bit about myself. I have 16 years of experience. I've been in the region for 10 years. Um, I've worked on multitude of a magnitude of different projects, one including a pre-engineered metal building that was the Stero Fire Station 45, um, as well as I am the project manager of the new um, um, RSW Public Safety Building um, that is currently under uh, bidding and permitting and soon to be in construction. A little bit of, about myself and, and, and my leadership, I, um, I'm proud to say that I've been recognized in the community for not only the work that we've done here at Schinkel Schultz, but the work that we've done uh, in our community and my personal. Um, I was recognized for uh, starting a corporation after Hurricane Ian for Rebuild Southwest Florida and led over 1,000 um, volunteers in nine months to clean over 800 homes and um, miles of mangroves. I was named Citizen of the Year, uh, 40 Under 40, and Defender of the Gulf. And I only say this to, um, because I know one of the, the comments that we received was um, my years of experience. And I just have to say quality over quantity. <laughs> I can't uh, add more years to my life. But um, it has been a pleasure to be a part of this community. And I take that, uh, our vision, very seriously. Um, and part of that commitment to the community <coughs> is working with LCPA as one of the major projects in our, in, in our region that impacts our region. Uh, is the airport, and um, we have, uh, we're proud to say that we've partnered with LCPA for 24 years, um, including our work at the ter terminal, Page Field, which happens to be Gary's favorite project he's ever worked on, and other support buildings. Here's a sample of some of that work, um, including hangars, to ticket counters, to phased projects, compressed schedules. We've done it all. Uh, we've worked with um, under, we've worked as a prime, we've worked um, with under civil engineers, and uh, we've continued to um, build on that relationship. In addition to that, we have Gary Kruger, who has worked on every single LCPA project that we've ever done for 24 years, and he brings that institutional knowledge uh, to our team. So here we have a proven team. Um, including, in addition to in, in addition to that, Jennifer Hunt, uh, who is our senior interior designer, she's not here with us today, but she has worked with LCPA on a, a multitude of interior projects, um, and so we have that understanding of LCPA's culture and mission. We have a local presence. We're only 15 minutes from the airport. Uh, we understand local and permitting codes, and uh, we bring that strong leadership and communication to um, to the team. We also are supported by 60 plus additional in-house staff of architects, interior designers, stewardship, and construction administration to support us in, in all our projects. 
Another important factor of this project would be our sub-consultants, and uh, we've built uh, strong partnerships with local engineers um, that we will put, uh, put as a part of our team. We also understand the importance of DBE, um, and so we have, as, as any of our prime projects that, we, that we've been selected on, we've exceeded that recommendation. So a little bit of our experience on this project, uh, related experience, uh, we have over 25 um, industrial warehouse facility projects here in Florida. And some of these are the images of, of some of those projects. I'm gonna highlight three um, that we've worked on. One you may be familiar with is here in, in, in Fort Myers. We saw regional service center that serves our hospitals. Um, they they uh, distribute meals, um, uh, sorry, equipment to doctors. And so the distri distribution warehouse um, they're receiving, storing, and repair services. Um, and then the second one is the Edgewater Public Works facility. This one we highlight because it's similar in size as well as um, budget. It had similar site constraints with stormwater and they consolidated um, their, um, their office administration and maintenance into one building. And so um, that is a project that we felt like was very similar to the scope. And then the, the third one is the South County Bus Depot Station. Uh, as you can see here, they have a similar programming where we'd have um, overhead doors with bays, and then here we are showing a vehicle lifts in this project. So a little bit about our current, um, the current project that you're looking at. Um, it's our understanding that LCPA has selected or has a preferred concept with option three. Um, we are looking at the scope that was provided, we understand that there is some challenges um, due to the impact of the wetland, and so that um, impacts the schedule. Um, it's uh, a long process to get the site permitting, and so we understand that as well as we've worked in similar situations or similar projects around the county. Um, so working with a strong civil team as well as um, making sure that we're on target with our schedule as well as uh, starting design, a parallel design, without um, impacting that, um, that site program, programming. Um, the other challenge is, um, or it's just confirming the programming, making sure that throughout that time we're meeting the end user's needs. Um, and so you've already have a, uh, an initial concept program for your first floor and second floor, and so we would continue that at work, working with your team. And then tracking the budget that was established, and it's our job to maintain that and, and track that during design. And so we typically, working with the CM or an estimator, would um, track that budget at every phase of the project and then reevaluate. So we have a knowledge of the program. We have worked and we have done every single space in, in this project. And here are just some examples of some of those of that program. The warehouse storage from break rooms to fuel tanks, we've done it all. And so um, we have experience with that. We've worked um, working on the public safety building with LCPA is um, it, it's important to one listen, but also be flexible in the changes that happen throughout design. And so I felt feel like we have done that and then shown that in working with the team. So again, listening is a major is a major component to being successful and at every stage evaluating and making sure we're moving forward in the right direction. And again, we take that very seriously and, and knowing that um, this is your building and meeting meeting um, what the mission and the, the goals of LCPA. We are residents, uh, we're travelers and we're partners. Um, we live here and we are, um, RSW is our airport. We understand the impact and we are part of that mission of growth. Um, and so uh, we're happy to, to be here today and have this opportunity to, to present to you. Um, so we're open to, to any questions and answers at this moment. Any questions? Okay. Yes, I just have a general question. When, when you show projects here, and this would actually be mm -hmm. to all the people that have done presentations here. What role do you actually play? Do you design it? Are you the architects? Or is it something where you just got to name the building? 
No, every project that we show is a firm project. Um, I have not been personally associated with every every project that we, we showed a lot of projects, <laughs> but um, we are the architects, the lead designers of the project. Um, so we design it, and we're the project managers. Um, so you work with a contractor that's actually going to do the bricks and mortar. Right, right. Most of those projects have been a traditional method where we're do you do the permitting. We do, we do. We, we, we work, well, the contractor holds the permit, but we, we help assist with the permitting and the bidding during that process. But we, we answer all the questions with the city or the county, um, and we, um, yes, we're part of that. But ultimately, every project that we show is our project, our work, and our design. Do you have a timing schedule? How long start to finish this project you say? Well, what we anticipate is the site permitting is going to be roughly a year. Um, it, and then I'm just, I'm just kind of without knowing all the ins and outs of the permitting uh, without I'm having sure. civil. That's going to be the first step. And in parallel, we would start our design. But we wouldn't want to complete our design without having all of the site permitting addressed um, so that we're not coming back to redesigning something based off of a comment we received or changed. So um, it, would, it would be over you know, that period. Months, years? Yeah. Well, a little bit over a year, I would say. Um, just <laughs> to, des to finish design, yes. Oh. Based off of site permitting only. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But Natalie, I think I heard you say, are you the actual project manager yes. for yes. our public safety building? Yes. OK. And congratulations on your Thank acknowledgment. You. But with that, um, this project, as you know, will require a lot of uh, expertise in coordinating the airport maintenance staff and the end users and the stakeholders. So with that being said, uh, tell me what type of hands-on experience that you think that you've got in this similar type project to accomplish this in addition to being PM on the other project. Um, I could use the public safety as an example um, because we've worked with multiple users. That project is um, not only for the sheriff, I'm sorry, for the police team, it's also for, it has emergency uh, operations in it. So we've worked with the LCPA team, with the um, police and um, emergency operations. And so bringing all those end users together in multiple pro project meetings, um, getting everybody on board, um, having our subconsultants be part of that. Um, so I, that is one example of a project that shows that um, different users and different operations that are happening and coming together, um, especially a, a police station where it needs a, a lot of security and making sure there's not a lot of going back and forth with different, um, there's different zones allowed. So there's a lot of complexity to that building. Um, I would say I worked on a lot of fire stations as well as similar with the bays and working in storage and the um, experience knowing uh, metal uh, pre-engineered metal buildings, which I, which I believe would be um, part of what this project would be, um, I it's, there's complexity in, in in all of that with the fire and storage separation. So uh, I could say that I have a lot of experience in the work that I've done here. So, so in the scope of services that I'm seeing here for this, it says that uh, it includes but performing the design, obviously, but also permitting. So as project manager, if you have an expensive, extensive uh, experience in working with all those different entities, because as yes. uh, Noah, Noah can tell you, that can get kind of crazy in yes. getting the permitting guys. I have. Every project I've, I've gone through, um, every project that I've project managed, which is a lot of projects, I've, I've gone through all the permitting as well. I answer all the questions. I even go to the city or the county to meet with them and review every comment before we submit. Actually, that's a practice we do. If we receive any comments, we first call the uh, whoever it is, the planner, the building, a mechanical or plumbing, when we sit down with them and ask them so that we understand their question, uh, clarify it so that when we submit, we could eliminate that second round of comments. Yeah. I'm more so with the wetlands and different things with the, I'm assuming, no be working with the Corps of Engineers and different right. things, right? Right. Well, that, and that's very important to us as well, is having that balance. We need to get this done, but we need to keep the wildlife intact as well. Mm -hmm. uh, did I understand you to say you thought 
from start to completion would be approximately one year? Well, it depends on if that the Army, the Corps of Engineers are involved. If we had like six to 10 months for um, South, Water, South Florida Water Management District, and then another six to eight months if the, if the uh, well, right now, in my it's experience, it's right, site about permitting. The six to eight months for the uh, water management district, mm -hmm. you have to get a ERP permit from the DEP, and then if you have any uh, drainage that goes into or that flows to the other sources, then you have a core <coughs> permit. And right now, the core is so backed up, the permits are taking about eighteen months. So you'll probably be looking at close to 18 months before you can even start doing anything on site. Right, the, the site permitting is the, the biggest challenge and uh, as far as starting the project and getting and making sure that we're in the right direction with design. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question too, we are, we are architects. We work on all aspects of the project, but we don't leave the civil. Uh, we, have a, we would have a strong civil team that leads that, um, but we are intimately involved in all of the site permitting um, coordination. Uh, we're concerned about, uh, you're gonna be washing uh, vehicles, uh, there's gonna be a lot of runoff, there's gonna be contaminants that are going into the water. How are you gonna, how is the project gonna be designed to deal with that? It's similar to, well, I'm just thinking about a similar project. A lot of fire stations are like that where we're, they're washing their, their trucks and there's a lot of requirements when you do that, um, especially if you're doing it inside the bay. Um, so there's oil and water separators that are required um, in your drains. And then obviously all the water that comes off from storm water, again, that would be a civil, um, a civil coordination item um, to storm water. But it is it is it is something that the county will um, take take seriously, and we have to. There are codes involved for handling that runoff. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, we have a, a time to wrap up. Gary's going to wrap up for us. All right. Thank you. For the record, Gary Kruger, partner with Schenkel Schultz Architecture. I've been with Schenkel Schultz for 38 years, uh, having transferred down here to Southwest Florida 30 years ago. Uh, over that time, we've had the opportunity to do a number of projects together with the Port Authority, uh, primarily as architectural subconsultants to engineering firms working on behalf of the authority. But we've always enjoyed and uh, have valued our working relationship with the authority staff, as well as with the community. Um, Based upon my working experience with Natalie, uh, I know that uh, she's a strong project manager. Uh, I know that she will do a wonderful job in terms of her diligence and her uh, expertise on behalf of the airport authority and uh, be a successful consolidated uh, maintenance facility project for RSW. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I think that concludes the presentations. Uh, is there any public comment that needs to be heard on this? Okay, so we'll start and we'll pick it up. So, Could I get a question in? Sure. Um, they were going to answer it after the end of about the EPA. Yes. Yeah. 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 This will be our public. <coughs> start. Yes, sir. Okay. The question is all they're talking about is environmental. And I'm wondering, don't we pick the site and we already know it's basically going to pass and we don't have all these problems? Where, where, where are we at with that? Yes, sir. Uh, again, Mark Fisher for the record. Uh, Emily's group has hired uh, an in, uh, a consultant to develop a concept, working with our engineers, uh, in staff engineers, work with our maintenance staff, two maintenance facilities. The logical site is the one in between, you know, for this project. And again, uh, I think Emily's group does that to keep this selection process as much apples to apples as possible so these firms don't come in and present Taj Mahals all over the airport that we can't do and can't afford. So that concept is where we think is the best site now, but the first task for this consultant will be come in and help verify, yes, that is the best concept when you start doing engineering and drainage and permitting and scheduling and all the things you guys are talking about. Is that still the best site or is there another alternative? So but right now, from where we're concerned, that based on what we know, that is the best site. But we've done no 
preliminary site? Are, are we is that a possibility? Uh, very, very doubtful. There hasn't been a lot of permitting uh, evaluation of the site. We know it's wet. We know it's wetland. We know it's all, ar all around it is wet and wetland. So it's all about the cost of mitigation and how that factors into the overall cost of the project. Right. If there's another place or way to do it better, that's what Emily's group working with this selected consultant today will find that out. We just don't have that information yet. Well, it looks like you've got two buildings there already, and you're putting this one right in the middle of it. So. Is that right, based on our rendering here? So yes, yes. I mean, again, funct functionally, like to have a consolidated maintenance facility, and you already have two, yeah. and you've got a place in between, that's just where it leads you initially, unless there are deal breakers that this firm you select today would help us flush that out. So it'll be, I'm sure, management's decision, but it might be, even if the mitigation cost is a little more, to get it all consolidated, exactly may be worth the money exactly That's what i'm here exactly all right yes sir. well I, I think we certainly need to make sure that this is the right site for this building because just right off the top you've got a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and you're going to need 2.9 mitigation credits so you're looking at a, a huge number before you even get started on anything and then you got the cost of filling the wetlands in and so we're looking at probably a million dollars worth of cost here on this site before we even get started. So hopefully it is, there are, I can't imagine the 7,000 acres at this airport that this is the best site. And, th and that's something the firm you select today is gonna help us evaluate. Work with our maintenance staff on functionality and balancing that with cost and schedule. And, and I'll say one more thing, yes, not that no. it's germane to what we're doing, but the infrastructure already there saves us money if we yes. went to somewhere else and just started over. Yes. We've got roads and driveways and across. Uh, I, I like it. They were just scaring me with all this EPA talk. <laughs> no, no, can do that. He, he plans for that. Or to do that. Those are real costs. Yeah. So no public comment. Thank you. Okay, so while they're tallying up, if we'd like to go to the executive director item. Thank you, Madam Chair. A uh, couple items for us today. Uh, for fiscal year to date, uh, base operations over at Page Field has sold nearly 2.3 million gallons of fuel, which is a 10% increase over this time last year. So they're still doing great out at Page Field. Uh, over here at RSW in October, uh, we will have 941,000 seats available, which is an 8% increase uh, compared to October of 2023. Um, there's also a substantial, almost 34% increase in nonstop markets with 55 cities served compared to only 41 last year. So good news on both fronts from the airport. Um, just a, a quick construction update. Um, I gave a quick briefing at the board meeting a couple weeks ago. Uh, phase one, there's really no change, but just to reiterate, uh, for phase one, uh, the, we're still working on pricing and reviewing some phasing to get some efficiencies and time savings there. So we'll have more uh, in the coming month to report back on that. And for phase two, Terminal E, um, again, the uh, enabling work is underway. Uh, for any of you who've been out to Terminal D, remember the old escalators that went down to the ramp level, those are gone, so it's a nice, uh, uh, hold room area over there. They're putting up the pilings for the jet bridges. So that work is progressing. Uh, we have some bond issuance coming up at the end of the month that uh, Mr. McGonigal and his team will be handling. So there's a, a lot of positives. And as we progress, expect more updates from you. When he gives that 560 million, will you make sure it's a two man policy on that? That's <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, whose name? Thank, Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as chair, I, I want to apologize that I was not able to be at the joint meeting and had a conflict with the IDA board that I was on. But uh, I personally just want to, again, say congratulations on getting that uh, awarded the Florida Airports Council prestigious J. Brian Cooper nice. Environmental Award. So I, I, I just think that just speaks volumes for uh, the regional airport here that we keep that balance. We, we're just experiencing so much growth here, but the environmental sensitivity, we, we it's on our radar as well at all times. 
and that that is why we've been hiring that team. Make sure that we're doing everything right because one mistake could just blow it up, right? We don't want that. So I hate I missed the vase, as you called it. The vase. Yeah, vase or vase. Oh, it might be a trophy, <laughs> but no, it's not, isn't it? It's really kudos to development and, and Emily's team, that all oh, the hard work that they're doing just That's regionally right. for the airport and the environment. Very good job, everyone. Okay, is there any comments from any other members? Uh, I yes. just quickly, uh, thanks to Steve, uh, I was able to take a group of uh, highly experienced pilots for a tour of the tower. And if you haven't taken that tour, I would highly recommend it. It's amazing, uh, the tower that we built, which is a rare case of the airport building the tower as opposed to the FAA building the tower. Uh, and it's pretty exceptional. And then also thank you to Vicki for uh, meeting with uh, the head of the executive director of the United Arts Council in Collier County and laying out a roadmap of uh, future exposure for Collier County artists uh, to display in our new terminal. Excellent. That's good. We're not, a, we're not allowed in our tower after everything went in, correct? We'll talk. Because <laughs> we were Remember? there before. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and it was like, wow, okay. All right, is there any public comment on any other matters that need to come? Oh. Any you? of the results. Oh, he's not on here. Okay, you can skip me. Then. Ah, that's I have, right. I, we have no items. Okay, sorry. It wasn't on. Oh, there you are. I checked you off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, listen, I understand that one. Tanny, you term. can't get rid of me that easy, okay? <laughs> For the record, Robert George, Procurement Manager for Lee County Port Authority, and reading off the ASMC's ranking for LOQ 25-003, Design Manager Services for Southwest Florida International Airport, Consolidated Maintenance Facility. First place ranking goes to Schinkel Schultz. Second place ranking goes to ICE. Third place ranking goes to Weston and Sampson. This ranking will be presented to the joint board at their next available meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I surely don't want to miss all these. You sure you don't have anything to come for? No, I will. Uh, <laughs> I will say no. And, but thank you. Good, good. That's always a good thing when you don't have to, <laughs> right, guys? Okay. All right. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, you do need to make a vote on that to accept. Oh, so sorry. Okay. So moved. Second. Right. Second. Any further yep. discussion? Yep. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank no, you so don't. much. All right. I guess that's it. Does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Well, can wait, I, wait, can I just time. say one thing? I I wish the press, the press, including the news press and all the stations and Vicki does such a great job but I wish they would pay more attention to us we have such good stories to tell out here and it's tough to get them involved and I I guess I don't get that <laughs> a lot of good things and mm -hmm. with the growth and everything that's been on us it, it, Steve I have to say the staff's done an astounding job and thank you when we had Laura Wayne here I said that at the joint meeting when we had her here at every meeting we got great press, and she would always follow up and call us all and say, you know, what else is going on? But we don't, we don't seem, we only get the bad things now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's what's happening everywhere yeah, today, unfortunately. It is. So I just threw right in there. All right, with no other business to come before us, then we'll stand adjourned. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Great meeting. Oh,